Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 6, Lesson 4, Manipulating Expressions Within Equations. So we've been working lately on solving two-step equations, right? Equations where you have to do two kind of arithmetic uh, operations in order to isolate the variable. But sometimes we have to manipulate expressions by using things like the distributive property, the commutative property, and the associative property before we even get the equation to look like a two-step equation. So that's what we're going to be working on today, okay? And really, what we're doing today is kind of like a combination of what we did in Unit 5 when we did a lot of work simplifying expressions, right? Taking these really complicated expressions and using the properties of real numbers to kind of get them in their simplest form, we're going to put that together with our two-step solving techniques to be able to solve some equations that look rather nasty, all right? So let's get into that right away. Here we go. All right, exercise number one. Consider the expression 4 times the quantity x plus 6 minus 7. Letter A. Rewrite the expression in simplest form. Show the manipulations that lead to your answer. All right, well, we did this a ton in the last unit. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take this expression. Now, please note, it is definitely not an equation, right? There's no equation here. You're not solving for x. There's no equal sign. You're just going to use the distributive property to multiply that parentheses by 4. And then you're going to do just a little bit of combining like terms. So pause the video now and try to write this expression in its simplest form. All right, well, let's do it. I'm going to rewrite the expression down here so that we see it nice and large. 4 times x plus 6 minus 7. The first thing I'm going to do is use the distributive property to multiply through by the 4. So that's going to be 4x plus 24 minus 7. And now I'm really using the associative property to group that subtraction together, and we'll get 4x plus 17. Now my claim is that this expression, this binomial, and this expression are equivalent, right? Meaning that they have exactly the same value for any given value of x. And let's, te let's test that <laughs> in letter B. Evaluate both the original expression and your answer from A at x equals 3 to test. All right, let's do the original together, and then we'll have you do this one on your own. So I just want to take x equals 3, you know, just a random value of x, and plug it into this expression and see what it's equal to. All right, here we go. So I'm going to take 4 times 3 plus 6 minus 7. Order of operations says do that 3 plus 6 and get 9. Then I'll do 4 times 9, which is 36, right? minus 7, and I'll get 29. All right, so that expression when x is equal to 3 is equal to 29. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to test to see if this expression also has the same value when x is 3. By the way, the blank right there, right, is just for you to put the expression 4x plus 17 in. So what I'd like you to now do is take this expression, substitute x equals 3 in, and see what you get. Pause the video now. All right, let's go through it. So we're going to put 3 in for x. Order of operations says do that multiplication first. We get 12 plus 17. 12 plus 17 is 29. Hey, look at that. Huh. All right. Great. No big deal, right? All it means is that this expression and this expression, really, they're the same expression. That's what equivalent expressions mean. They're just written in a slightly different way. Let's keep going. Now, sometimes we have to manipulate an expression within an equation in order to produce a classic two-step equation. Let's take a look at exercise number two. Consider the equation 4 times the quantity x plus 6 minus 7 equals 29. Parentheses, it may look familiar. All right, so this is not a classic two-step equation, all right? But we can make it into a two-step equation if we look at the expression on the left-hand side and in letter A, we manipulate it so that it's completely simplified. Now, I want to be very clear about something. 
Whenever you manipulate an expression on one side or the other side of an equation, you are in no way, shape, or form solving that equation. You're not doing anything to solve that equation. You're actually just doing what we did in the last unit. You're taking an expression and you're replacing it with one that's equivalent to it. And again, let's go through this, right? This is what I mean, right? If I take this equation, all right, and I only look at the left-hand side, I just look at this left-hand side and I multiply that four, x, four times x plus six times the, the four to get that, right? Notice I'm not doing anything to the 29, right? All I'm doing is taking that left-hand side and doing exactly what I did in exercise number one, and I'm rewriting the four times x plus six minus seven into four x plus 17. Now, some students get kind of confused because they remember solving equations and they say, well, wait a second. If you multiply this side by four, don't you have to multiply this side by four? And the answer is no, right? I'm not actually multiplying this side by four. There's already a four there right? I'm really just like kind of forgetting that the right hand side's even there and I'm just rewriting this expression as its equivalent which is down here. And once I have it like this I now have a classic two-step equation form that I can solve. Do that in letter B. All right, let's do it. So now I've got 4x plus 17 is equal to 29. I can subtract 17 from both sides, right? I'll get 4x is equal to 12. I can now divide both sides by 4, and lo and behold, I get that value that I used in the last problem to check the equivalence, x equals 3. All right, and that is really the thrust of the entire lesson we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using our skills from the last unit to take primarily the left-hand side of the equation, simplify it until we get a classic two-step kind of expression, a two-step expression, which then leads to a two-step equation, which we can then solve using the techniques we've developed. All right, so let's get some practice on that. Here we go, exercise number three. Consider the equation five times the quantity x minus seven is equal to 20. Solve the equation by manipulating the left-hand side and then check your solution in the original equation. All right, so let's do this one together. And again, it's really helpful to check whatever answer you get in the original equation because that will check not only your algebra in solving the equation, but it will also check your algebra in manipulating the expression. So here we go, right? Let's write down the equation again to begin. 5 times x minus 7 is equal to 20. I'm going to use the distributive property, right? And I'm going to rewrite that as 5x minus 35. And again, I can't emphasize enough that all I've done is taken this expression and replaced it with one that's equivalent to it. Almost all the work that we've ever done with equivalent expressions has led us to this point, to being able to take expressions in equations and replace them with expressions that are equivalent to them. But now it's easy enough to solve this. I'm going to add 35 to both sides. All right, that's going to give me 5x is equal to 55. Now I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides and move this out of the way. And I'll get a solution, x equals 11. All right. Now, again, if I'm going to check this answer, I don't want to check it in this equation, this one. I want to check it in this one, in the original. So let's do that, and we'll put our check right over here. Let's do that together. All right, x equals 11. So I put 11 back into the original equation, and I want to see if that equation now is true. So of course, 11 minus 7 is 4, and 5 times 4 is 20. And so, I know I'm right. All right. So much of what students think of as equation solving really isn't solving equations. It's actually manipulating expressions using the distributive property, combining like terms, commutative property, associative property, all of that kind of stuff, right, to simply get us to a point 
where we can then solve an equation. You know you're actually solving an equation when you use properties of equality like adding the same number to both sides, dividing both sides by the same number, etc. That's then solving the equation. Everything else is just manipulating expressions to get equivalent expressions. Let's keep going to do some that are a bit more complicated. All right, here we go. Exercise number four. Solve each of the following equations by first manipulating the left-hand side. Check your answers in the original equations. All right, let's do the first one together and then have you do the second one on your own. All right, letter A. Let's do it. So, I'm going to rewrite it. You don't have to necessarily rewrite it. I just want you to be able to see it a little bit better on my own paper. All right, I'm going to distribute that 9 through that parentheses. That's going to be 9n plus 27 minus 25 is equal to 65. All right, I'm now going to combine these two constants. 27 minus 25 is just positive 2. And now I have that classic two-step form, which I can solve by subtracting 2 from both sides, giving me 9n is equal to 63. Now I'll divide both sides by 9 and I'll get n is equal to 7. Okay, great. Now, of course, I didn't give myself a lot of room to check this thing. Why don't we do the check? We might need to erase the check um, eventually, but, oh, I almost got it. So let's, let's do our, our check, right? Now, again, the check, we really want to have that done in the original equation. So I want to take my n equals 7 whew, and put it all the way up here. Uh, checking an equation, the thing that nobody really wants to do. All right, we want to see if that's correct. Okay, so we're going to do the 7 plus 3 and we're going to get 10. Right, we then do 9 times 10 and get 90. Whoops, and somehow we're not going to change a 25 to a 26, that would be weird. But in fact, 90 minus 25 is 65. So that checks. All right. Whether you do your check on a separate sheet of paper or not, you know, you, you've, you've really, it's in your best interest to do that check. All right. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video now and work on letter B. All right. I'm going to kind of get rid of our check on letter A so that we've got enough room to do letter B. We'll also kind of Bring this guy over here. Hmm. Oh my. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll just do it this way then. Okay, so let's do it. In letter B, right, we'll just go with the distribution right away. I'm going to get 4w plus 36 plus 10 is equal to 22. All right, I'm now going to combine the 36 and the 10 to be 46. All right, classic two-step form. I'm going to subtract a 46 from both sides. Be careful here. We find our first instance of negative numbers in this lesson. 22 minus 46 is negative 24. Now I'll divide both sides by 4 and I'll get w equals negative 6. All right. Now, hopefully, I've got enough room for my check. We're going to put that right over there. Do a little dashed line for my check. All right, so we have 4 times negative 6 plus 9 plus 10 is equal to 22. Let's see if I can sneak it in there. Negative 6 plus 9 is 3, positive 3. And I've got plus 10 is equal to 22. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 10 is equal to 22, and 22 equals 22. So it checks. I know w equals negative 6 is the correct answer. All right. But again, all we're doing in these initial few steps is just what we did in the last unit by taking expressions and writing them in their simplest form. These can get quite ugly, quite frankly. They can actually get quite seriously complicated. So. <laughs> Let's look at a few of these, right? Manipulations can get quite lengthy. Stick with them until you've simplified the expression enough to solve the equation. All right, exercise number five. 
Solve each of the following equations by first manipulating the left-hand side of the equation. Carefully distribute and then combine like terms until you can use our two-step equation solving technique. Check your answers. All right, as always, let's do letter A together and then we'll have letter B, have you work on letter B on your own. All right, letter A. So we've got two distributions now we have to do. We're gonna distribute through by the four, all right? And that's going to give us four X minus 12 plus, now we're gonna distribute through by the two. That's gonna be six X plus eight equals 76, right? I now I'm gonna just rearrange a little bit so that the like terms are sitting beside each other, right? So I've got, I'm gonna flip flop some things here. I can now combine four X and six X to get 10 X. Here I'm really combining a negative 12 and a positive eight to get negative four. And now I'm gonna add four to both sides. Since I now have my classic two step form, I get 76 plus four, which is 80. Divide both sides by 10 and I get X is equal to eight, right? Again, let's take a look at this, right? We use the distributive property here to simply get rid of the parentheses. We then technically use the commutative property of addition to take negative 12 plus 6x and write it as 6x plus negative 12. We then used our technique of combining like terms to take these two and make them into this and these two and make them into this. And it wasn't really until right down here that we finally had our two-step equation that we started to solve, all right? I think we'll skip the check right now. Trust me that when I take x equals eight and I plug it up in here, it will check. Now, you've got the harder task, right? And the reason you've got the harder task is that here I've got a subtraction. Remember, when you distribute a subtraction through a parentheses, the sign on everything inside that parentheses is gonna switch. Pause the video now and see if you can successfully solve that equation. All right. Let's go through it. Here we go. First, distribute through by the two. All right, that's going to give me 2n plus 12. Now remember, what we really have here is a plus negative six, right? So we're gonna distribute that through the parentheses and negative six times n is gonna be, well, negative six n. But here's the one that you could really make a mistake on. Negative six times negative three is going to be positive 18. That can be very tricky. All right, so now let's again use a little kind of commutative property here. I'm gonna rewrite this as 2n plus negative 6n plus 12 plus 18 equals 38. 2n negative 6n, I'm gonna combine like terms to make negative 4n. 12 plus 18, I'll combine to get 30. And then of course, 38 is just 38. All of the manipulations up till this point in time have not done anything to solve my equation. They've simply been there to simplify the left-hand side. Now let's solve the equation. I will subtract 30 from both sides. That will give me negative 4n is equal to positive eight. And now I will divide both sides by negative four. I'll put my solution up here. Keep in mind that eight divided by negative four positive divided by a negative is a negative, and so our answer is negative two. Okay, that's a lot of manipulation, right? And it would be very easy to make a mistake like have minus 6n minus 18 there, right? To forget that a negative times a negative gives me that positive. That would be easy to do. It'd be easy to have like kind of 2n minus 6n and get a positive 4n instead of a negative 4n, right? But all of which, if you got that final answer and you checked it in your equation, you would know whether you got it right or wrong. You will always know whether you get an algebra problem right or wrong if you care enough to actually do the check. And I, don't get me wrong, I know that the check requires time, it requires thinking, it requires good arithmetic, order of operations, all that. But ultimately, you can know whether or not you got the right answer to any equation that you're trying to solve. Let's wrap this one up. So we didn't learn any new equation solving techniques today. We only solved two step equations. The key was though, we had to do some kind of manipulation like we did back in unit five 
before we could even have a two-step equation. We use the distributive property a lot. We combine like terms a lot, right? But all we were doing was combining things from the last unit with things we've been doing in the last couple lessons. In the next lesson, we're going to see how we can really look at the structure of an equation and try to use it to help maybe take some shortcuts in solving some types of equations. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.